If you would turn to the first book of Kings, um, again, familiar uh, verses, chapter 19, first Kings chapter 19, dealing with uh, the prophet uh, Elijah and Israel and those other characters that are found here. 1 Kings 19 verses, we're going to read verses 8 through, first 8 through uh, 13. Speaking about Elijah, and he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, of the hosts for the children of Israel, have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth. And stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passes by, and a great and strong break, I'm sorry, a great and strong wind in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and he said, What doest thou here, Elijah? We thank God for the reading of his word, and we're going to use for a, a subject today, turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And, and it's not so much with regards to your, you know, natural location or your natural position, but we're more looking at your spiritual, spiritual level or your spiritual position. Why, where are you and why are you where you are? So why are you here? This was the word of the Lord that came to the prophet. And again, we're going to challenge you and we hopefully to motivate you to turn your hearts and your minds back to God even more so after this weekend is over. But we see the man of God whom God has blessed to be one of the great prophets of the Lord during the time of Israel days when they were um, governed by natural kings. And God has spoken through Elijah. The Bible declares that he declared that there would be a famine in the land there would be a drought for three and a half years and God heard the man of God's prayer and declaration and God honored Elijah's prayer to the point where there was no rain for three and a half years. God uh, allowed the, the clouds to not to give forth rain and the land to become dry but in the meantime God provided and he provided provisions for the man of God. The Bible tells us that he allowed him to go by the brook Cherith, where by being there, God allowed ravens to come and to feed the man of God bread and meat by morning and in the evening. And then after the brook had dried up, where there was no more water because of the drought, the Bible declares that God instructed um, Elijah to go down to Zarephath, where there would be a widow woman whom God would command or instruct to take care and to provide and to sustain the man of God. Well, Elijah goes down, the Bible says, and he finds this woman and she's gathering up sticks and gathering up um, things because she's going to prepare one more meal for she and her son. And then she, she feels that she's going to die once she prepares the last meal. All of the meal, I guess, is gone. The oil um, um, vessel is, it has run out. But the man of God asks her just to give him some water and then to make him a cake first. And by the word of the Lord, if you make me a cake first, by the word of God, your vessel of oil will not run dry and neither will your meal fail or will it be, be empty. And the Bible declares that she did that. She blessed the man of God and she hearkened to his voice. And the Bible says that for the rest of the famine, 
she did eat. She and her son and Elijah, while there, was provided for even in the midst of the famine. God still provided for his elect, for his chosen. Aren't you glad that God still provides protection and defense and provisions even in the midst of famine, in the, even in our own land, in the midst of turmoil and disaster and disease? God still provides for his chosen elect of God. He still is our Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that does provide. I'm so glad that I serve a God that's able to reach even beyond the circumstances that America or that the natural um, 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 disasters may, 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 may bring to pass. We serve a God that reaches way even beyond natural ability to still provide for his own, his chosen elect. I'm so glad that we serve a God that can provide. So the Bible declares that after that, the woman's son, while Elijah is there, her son dies, and she feels as if God has judged her for previous sins, so she confronts Elijah. Elijah sees this. He becomes distressed, seeing that this woman had been so kind and so, um, so hospitable towards him. Elijah takes this boy up to the upper chamber, up to the upper room, and he lays on him three times, and he prays unto God, and God hears his prayer, and God raises this young man from the dead. So we see God moving and working in the life of Elijah. Then the Bible declares that the time has come for the great confrontation, and Elijah goes and he finds I think it was Obadiah, one of the prophets, I believe, could be wrong there, but he finds them, they arrange to meet with Ahab, and then they have this big old confrontation where Elijah instructs Israel, they need to make a decision, they need to choose this day whom they were going to serve, they needed to make a decision, and he said, we'll just have an example, we'll just have a test. Whosoever God will answer by fire and consume the sacrifice, and that will be the God that we, that you will serve. And they say, sure enough, we will do that. Well, we all know the story. The God of, the people of Baal prayed and sought God all day into the night. There was no answer. Cut themselves, screamed and yelled. But the Bible says that when Elijah offered up his sacrifice, he put water and wood and, and, and 12 stones. And when he prayed unto God, and he said, Lord, so that the people will know that you sent me, that I am not just here on my own, on my own accord, on my own volition, under my own ability, under my own spirit. Let them know that you have sent me and that you have approved me to be in this place at this time. And God, hearken to the prayer of the man of God. God consumed the sacrifice, consumed the water, consumed consumed the wood, con consumed the stones, everything was lapped up. And they said, oh, God is God. We will serve him. We will praise him. And then Elijah had the Israelites to lay hold to the prophets, and they were slain. They were killed. Well, the Bible declares that Jezebel gets word that Elijah has slain the prophets of Israel, I mean the prophets of Baal. And she declares that by tomorrow, by the next day, the way that Elijah had the prophets of Baal slain, he himself would also be slain as well. Now, here is a man of God that has seen God work in tremendous, miraculous ways. I mean, beyond any of our experiences, with regards to seeing God perform miracles. I mean, talking about birds bringing him food. Yeah. Oh, God, help us here. Right. Seeing how God blessed um, the, the woman's a meal and oil not to run dry during the course of the famine. We see how God brought back life into this, into this boy seeing how God had moved and consumed his the sacrifice, showing that he was the supreme, only living and wise God. But at the word of Jezebel, Elijah becomes afraid and fearful for his life. Lord, help us here. Now, now, now in our minds, we want to wonder, well, what is it that after 
God had shown such a mighty demonstration of his power and authority on behalf of Elijah, what would make him vulnerable to, to, to cave in and to become afraid of the threat from Jezebel. Well, I have a couple of thoughts there. One thing is I've learned that often, sometimes as we minister, physically we become, you become vulnerable. Once you have extended all that, that you have, once you have given all you got to give, and if you are not replenishing and restoring back, guess what? Sometimes your well may run dry to the point where you become suspect or you become vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Oh, God, help us here. And in my own mind, I, I do not believe that, that Satan is omniscient as God is. God knows everything. God knows all things. But in my mind, I see Satan as being limited to his knowledge about the people of God. And oftentimes, he may not be made aware of what we possess or the plans that God has for our lives until God openly demonstrates his power and authority and glory through us for his edification. Help me here. Now, now when I say that, if you remember in your mind, David, once he had killed the bear, he killed the lion, no big deal. So what? It was a secret. It was not a threat. And it was no big deal. But once, once David killed Goliath, now the whole world knows about this boy, David. Now it is noise abroad that he is going to be something special. Now, in my mind, now the enemy now knows what God has in store for the man of God. And he will do everything within his power to thwart and to defeat and to cancel out the dream and the vision that God has for our lives. My God, it was not until Saul heard the praises of the women with regards to David that he became jealous and upset. Knowing that David, he said, well, what's next? He'll just take my kingdom. Knowing the position that God had for David. What did he try to do? Try to kill David. Right? Because he understood he was selected, chosen by God. So, in my mind, Lord, help us here. So the enemy is not as, cra as wise as God. But sometimes we have to be careful as to what we say, when we say it, and who we say it to. Do you hear me? Because if Joseph could be here today, maybe he would tell us, well, Maybe I shouldn't have told my brothers that they were going to be bowing down to me and that my mother and father was going to have to pay homage to me because by me opening my mouth caused the envy and the hatred for both my brothers to be heightened and raised against me. So, what it, because God shows you something special, that he has ordained for your life. Yes. Be careful who you tell. Be careful what you say. And make sure when you begin to disclose it that you be ready to fight against the enemy. Hallelujah. Because once the cover is off, the enemy is going to try with all his might to kill your dream. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. You're praying for me? Yes. So, so we see here the man of God finds himself running away hearing this declaration from this woman. Now, and then there, there's a, a question that I like to ask us sometimes. Uh, Galatians 5 and 7 says, You did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? I mean, we were, we were doing good. Experiencing the power and a demonstration of the might and the authority of God. What happened? Oh God, did the enemy show himself so powerful that we shrunk back in fear? Go help us here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the Bible declares then that he goes on and he finds himself in the area and, and the Lord asks him, Where what, what are you doing here? Now, I've already shown you that I'm for you. I've already shown you that I am more than the world against you. So why have you allowed yourself to become victimized by fear, especially afraid of one as wicked as Jezebel? Lord, help us here. So the question to us tonight is, why are you where you are? Why have you not made strides and why have we not matured and grown and elevated in the Lord? He has already shown himself mighty on your behalf. He has already delivered some of your children, already saved some of your spouses, already delivered on your jobs, already delivered in your home. So why are you where you're at? Why are you still there? What more can he do? What more can he show you that he is God and besides him there is none other? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we love you today. So the Bible declares that he goes on and He's able to eat, and he's told to go. He's going on a 40-day journey. He gets enough food that will last him for that 40 days. Now, when he gets down to verse 11, he, the Lord asks him, what are you doing here? Talks about he's the only one that, that, was, that had not bowed down to Baal. The only one letter. Sometimes we feel that way, don't we? You're doing your job where people are just raising all kind of sand at school, from the teacher to the students to the principal to the secretary. They don't have a, an idea, don't have a desire or a mind to, to think about God. Everything is you know, bad word this and bad word that and you got to go somewhere to hide just to clear your mind, just to have a little peace. You have been there? Sometimes, but guess what? You're not alone. You're not by yourself. There's somebody else going through. There's somebody else ain't gave up, didn't throw in a towel. They face it on their job too. They face it in the home too. They face it in the school too. But they have maintained their integrity. So hold on. You ain't by yourself. You ain't the only one going through. That's a lie. That's a pity party lie. You ain't, you ain't the only one going through. But it makes you feel good sometimes. But I'm the only one. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Well, believe me, there is no temptation that is under the It's not common to man or uncommon to man. Whatever you're going to do, someone else has experienced it either on the same level 
on a lower level or on a higher level. But you ain't going through it by yourself. And then remember, Jesus said, Lo, I am with you, when always, even till the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus said that. The Holy Ghost in you shall be your comforter that will lead and guide and direct you into what all truth. It will be your helper. It will undergird you. It will strengthen you. It will enlighten you. Help us here. 